Hello, welcome to What is Cultivated Meat by the Educated Choices Program in partnership with the Good Food Institute. Today, we'll be learning about cultivated meat technology and how it can benefit the world around us. Without technological advancements, imagine how differently we would go about our day-to-day -day lives. The ways in which we communicate, travel, and purchase goods are now faster and more convenient than ever before. Technological advancements have improved our lives and this includes the ways our food is produced. Advances in the most cutting edge technology have allowed us to grow food in ways we've never been able to before that are better for people, animals, and the planet. But the end result is the same, it's food. One of the most exciting new advancements in food tech is cultivated meat. You may have heard cultivated meat referred to as cultured meat or cell-based meat too. Cultivated meat uses food technology known as cellular agriculture, which is the production of real animal products without the need to raise animals for slaughter. All the images you see here, from beef, pork, chicken, and even fish and shrimp, are real images of cultivated meat products. That means, while the pork is the same as what you get from raising a pig, a pig was not slaughtered to produce it. So how is this possible? Let's take a deeper look into the process of producing cultivated meat, followed by a brief review. Step 1. The process starts with a small, relatively harmless procedure called a biopsy, or the removal of a small sample of tissue to obtain cells from a living animal. Step 2. Stem cells are isolated from the sample and used to start the cultivated meat process. Stem cells have the unique ability to develop into different cell types with specific functions, such as muscle cells, which will ultimately develop into real animal meat in this process. Step 3. The stem cells are placed in a large, sterile structure called a bioreactor, or cultivator, which creates the ideal environment for the cells to develop and grow, similar to what happens inside an animal's body. Bioreactors are already used for processes we see in our everyday lives, such as beer and yogurt production. In the bioreactor, cells are grown in a liquid called a medium that contains salts, sugars, fats, and growth factors, along with other proteins. These additions trigger the cells to grow and develop into the many cell types that make up meat, including muscle and fat cells. At this stage, other techniques can be applied, such as including solid structures called scaffolding. Scaffolding provides a surface for the cells to develop into the desired texture and shape, which changes based on the kind of meat being produced. Step 4. The muscle cells combine to form small cylindrical structures called myotubes, which can ultimately form muscle tissue. Lastly, Step 5. Ingredients are added to the muscle tissue to create a final product that looks, feels, and tastes just like the animal products we are already familiar with. These ingredients can include fats like coconut oil or even cultivated animal fat. Other ingredients such as seasonings and breading are added, just as you would with traditional animal products to produce the foods we eat today, like burgers and nuggets. Now that we know the process, why is cultivated meat such an exciting and necessary technology? Currently, a single cow raised over two years using modern food production practices and then killed will yield roughly 800 quarter pound burger patties. Meanwhile, there is the potential to collect a small sample of cells from a living cow to produce many more burgers in a fraction of the time. Let's review. Cultivated meat is created in a five-step process. The first step is a biopsy, or the removal of a small sample of tissue to collect cells from a living animal. In step two, stem cells are separated from the sample. Stem cells can develop into different cell types, such as muscle cells. During step three, stem cells are placed in a bioreactor, which creates the ideal environment for cells to develop. The cells are grown in a medium containing salts, sugars, fats, and growth factors along with other proteins. The stem cells develop into the many cell types that make up meat, including muscle cells. 
Scaffolding can be used to provide a surface for the cells to develop into the desired texture and shape of the products being produced. In step four, the muscle cells align to form myotubes, which ultimately create muscle tissue. And in step five, additional ingredients such as fats, seasonings, and breading are added to create real animal meat products, such as chicken nuggets and beef burgers. While it may sound futuristic, cultivated meat and the technology used to create it are already here today. So what other benefits does cultivated meat have? Imagine a world with fewer transmissible diseases, reduced waste going into our waterways, and safer work conditions for those who produce our food. This can certainly happen in a world where cultivated meat is the norm instead of conventionally produced meat. Let's explore how this is possible. From a health perspective, Cultivated meat can benefit global human health through the possible reduction of foodborne illnesses and contamination. This is primarily due to the aseptic environment in which cultivated meat is created. Once the cells are collected and have started growing, there should be no need to utilize antibiotics to fight off pathogens that could cause foodborne illnesses or the possibility of contamination from animal waste, such as from feces and urine. Since cultivated meat significantly reduces the need to raise animals in overcrowded, unsanitary conditions, it should also significantly reduce the risk of epidemics or pandemics spread by zoonotic or animal transmission. According to the United Nations, the top three drivers of the next pandemic are directly linked to animal consumption. Industrial animal agriculture also comes with high environmental costs compared to cultivated meat. For example, the expansion of pasture land to raise cattle was responsible for 41% of tropical deforestation and accounts for 72% of the deforestation in Brazil, signaling an urgent need for change to protect our planet and all who inhabit it. Cultivated meat technology offers a solution to these issues by addressing the world's growing demand for sustainably produced foods while reducing high resource usage for raising animals, habitat destruction for pastures and facilities, and pollution caused by the animal agriculture industry. From an ethical perspective, cultivated meat production can create safer conditions for workers. In the United States, for example, Tyson Foods, with 33% more workers than Ford, had six times the number of reported severe injuries between 2015 and 2022. Meanwhile, cultivated meat production can significantly reduce the risk of injury or illness associated with breeding, raising, and killing animals for food because it's made with cells collected from a small number of living animals. This technology has the potential to replace the billions of animals killed for food every year in hazardous conditions, all while limiting the risk of injury and illness for workers. So we've heard about how cultivated meat is made and its benefits, but when can we actually try it? Excitingly, in Singapore and the United States, the world's first two regulatory approvals were granted for the commercial sale of cultivated chicken meat. These approvals signal that certain cultivated products are considered safe to eat. In 2020, Israel created a test restaurant that served dishes with cultivated chicken. And China has geared up to explore cultivated meat and other new food technologies in their agricultural blueprint for food security between the years 2021 and 2025. So you may find cultivated meat in restaurants and stores near you in the future, regardless of where you live. While the technology to produce cultivated meat is certainly groundbreaking, one of the most exciting things about it is that you can use cultivated meat in the same exact way that you currently use conventionally produced meat products, because it isn't like meat, it is meat. That means you can still eat steak, hamburgers, bacon, and salmon, all with the same flavor and texture you may enjoy. With government approval for consumption in various stages worldwide, we will witness monumental shifts to improve our food systems. As these products become more available, 
We have the opportunity to minimize our impact by choosing cultivated meat to create a better, more sustainable future for the planet, animals, and society. Wondering how to stay up to date on the world of cultivated meat? Visit our partner websites, whatiscultivatedmeat.com and gfi.org, or watch our extended presentation, Future of Food, for more in-depth looks at cultivated meat, the technology involved, and the possibilities it will bring. You can also visit our Next Steps Toolkit by scanning this QR code to find more resources and alternatives that you can try today. Remember, you viewed What is Cultivated Meat today. Thank you for watching.